Hello guys, in this presentation I will be showing you how to configure the DHCP service and enabling the DHCP service on a computer network. So for this demonstration uh, we'll be making use of a software called the ENSP. So ENSP is developed by Huawei. It's a software used to simulate enterprise networking environments and it also includes devices like the routers, uh, switches. Also you can do some Wi-Fi simulations and some firewalling. Uh, if we may call it that. So for this uh, presentation we'll focus on the configuration of the DHCP service like I've mentioned. In a separate video we're going to be showing you how to install the ENSP software as well as uh, giving you a brief introduction as to the working environment and how to navigate the system. So what I like most about the ENSP is if you learn to configure devices using the ENSP, it's the same thing as configuring the commercial products because we're going to be using the command line interface for this demonstration. So now this is what the ENSP interface looks like. Um, I won't do so much of the introduction as to the interface. Um, the focus would be on the configuration of DHCP. So here we have a two-layer architecture actually. So we have PCs here at the, uh, we call it user layer, and then we have the access layer and the core layer. So we have a router, we have a access switch connected to different PCs. If you remember from the DHCP series, we mentioned that DHCP is an application layer protocol used to dynamically assign network configuration parameters to internet hosts. So what this means basically is for a device to communicate on the network, whether it be end stations like the PCs or laptops, or you also have the mobile phones, you need to have an IP address. So every device, first of all, has a physical location, but then on a network, they are identified by their IP address. This is actually what shows the network location of these devices. So one of the ways this can be done is through manual configurations like we've mentioned. So here you can see PC1 is uh, a manually configured host having the IP address of 10.10.10.100 and a submit mask of 255.255.255.0 and it's communicating um, to other hosts on other networks via the gateway 10.10.10.1. So this is a very easy thing to do, most especially when you have uh, only a few hosts to configure. So let's go to the command uh, command line of this PC and we enter the command IP. Okay, so first we need to start the devices. So let's go ahead and start the devices. Right, it should take just a few moments. Okay, now um, we're going to look into PC1. All right, so let's enter the command IP config. So we see here this is the uh, network information that we just described as well as the MAC address of course of this terminal. So this is how we can uh, get the network information on this uh, software. So for the second one, we're going to look at the DHCP clients, PC2 and PC3. So if you notice, when we go to the command line and we enter the IP config, we wouldn't see anything. It's 0, .0 .0 because no IP address has been configured for this system and we do not intend to use static configuration. We want to use the DHCP. So what this means is all the network information that this device will uh, acquire will be from a DHCP server. We're not going to manually configure uh, PC2 and PC3. So these are the steps. Uh, okay, first of all, before we go to the steps, let's look at some of the parameters we would likely define. The first one is the IP address and the subnet mask. Like we've described, this is the network identifier for every host on the network. So it shows the location of this device on the network. And then the second one is the gateway IP address. So the gateway 
in a simple term means if a device wants to communicate with another device outside its local network, then it needs to talk to the gateway. So the gateway is more like the exit point from the current network. So the second one, uh, the third uh, option here is the DNS server address. So DNS server is uh, more like a directory, a network directory that all the computers, all the hosts need to consult whenever you enter a domain name. For example, you go to facebook.com or uh, google.com. So all these computers, they do not understand google.com. They need to consult the DNS server. First of all, the DNS server will translate this before uh, the PCs can access the internet. So the, the fourth one is the NTP server address. So this is used for time synchronization on the network and uh, also DHCP options. So if you want to carry additional parameters in the DHCP packets, then you can use the DHCP options. But for this lab and this demonstration, we're only going to be configuring these three parameters. So these are the things we need to do to complete this task. So we need to configure on the DHCP server and we also have some configurations to perform on the DHCP client. It's actually very straightforward. Just start the DHCP process on the DHCP client. So now our DHCP server is this router, AR2220. So the router at the moment is started. So let's go ahead and do some configurations on this uh, router. So the first thing we want to do, I like to do personally, is to go to the system view and then change the system name. Right now it's reading Huawei. So I will change this to physical logic. All right, there we have it. So now the system name is physical logic. The next thing we're going to do is to configure the address pool or scope on the DSP server. So the address pool is more like creating an object uh, which contains all the IP addresses that are available for the host to utilize. So let's go ahead and configure the address pool. So the command to do this is IP pool. So uh, if you want to get suggestions on the next commands on ENSP, you can just use a question mark. So you specify the pool name. So we call this DHCP pool one. So this is it. Now we are currently in the pool. So the next thing we want to do is to specify the network configuration parameters. So we are going to specify the network network we are using is 10.10.10.0 network and then the next thing we want to do is to configure the subnet mask so the subnet mask is 24 yeah that's the prefix length we can use that 24 and then the next thing we do is to configure the gateway IP address so the command for that is gateway list and then we can specify multiple gateways. So for this one, we only want to use one gateway, 10.10.10.1. And then the next thing is the DNS server address. So similarly, DNS list. So we'll, we will specify 8.8.8.8 and also very common uh, a DNS server, 4.2.2.2. So we specify two. DNS servers. So the first one is going to be tested. If it's not reachable, then the second DNS uh, server will be uh, tested as well. And then we need to exclude IP addresses that may cause a conflict. So on this network, if we configure the pool, it's going to assume that all IP addresses are available except for the gateway IP address. So by default, the gateway IP address is excluded from the IP pool. It cannot be assigned to another host. But then we see PC1 is a manually configured host with the IP address of 10.10.10.100. So we need to exclude this from the pool so we don't have a conflict. So let's do that. Excluded IP address 
10.10.10.100. So now we can guarantee that this IP address will not be given to any system on the network. So the next thing to do is to start the DHCP process on the DHCP server. So we need to quit this view by pressing the Q key or quit command. That's it. And then we need to start the DHCP process. So we DHCP enable. Okay, spell that wrong. DHCP enable. Now the DHCP process has started on the DHCP server. Now we need to bind the address pool to the receiving interface. So now we go to the interface gigabit ethernet zero slash zero slash zero so this is the interface where we're binding to so currently this is not configured display this there is no configurations on this interface as we can see so we need to configure the IP address for this interface which is the gateway IP address so IP address 10.10.10.1 24 then the interface is up so the next thing we do is to bind the IP pool to the uh, interface so actually the easiest way to do this is to specify DHCP select global so when we do the DHCP select global it's going to check from among the pools configured on this device which one of them has the gateway IP address configured in some cases the gateway may reside on a different device but as long as the interface on which the DCP packets are received is within the IP pool then it's going to deliver the IP addresses to the device so DCP select global so let's display this to ensure that everything okay at this point we can go ahead and enable DHCP on our client so let's one more time let's check there is IP config okay there is no IP address so let's go ahead and enable DHCP on the client so obtain DNS server address automatically apply so when we do this, remember there's going to be the DHCP discover message sent from the client to the server, and then the server will also respond with the offer packet, and then we have the request message, and then we have the acknowledgement. So this actually should take just a few seconds. So let's go back and check if we have the IP address. Now, this is it. So we now have the system so we now have the system configured with the IP address 10.10.10.254. So it's taking in reverse order. And also the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. And then we have the gateway IP address and the DNS server addresses, DNS server 1 and server 2, as we specified in the IP pool. So this is how easy it is to configure the DHCP on the ENSP platform so the processes are also similar for other platforms so if you're configuring on a Windows server or you're configuring on a Cisco router or Unify router or TP-Link it's the same thing basically you need to create your IP pool you also need to specify the network parameters you want your host to receive it doesn't matter what system the DHCP is enabled on because it is an open standard as long as the process is already running your client can get the IP address from the server so uh, that's about it for the DHCP configuration if you like this video please you can give us a thumbs up uh, if you also have any suggestions on how we can improve on the video to serve you the viewers better you can also leave a comment and your suggestions as well so thank you and we'll see you in the next one